Well, good morning again. Yes, it's still morning. Uh, here we are at the uh, MDO Ocean Village uh, for the OGR race. And uh, we've got uh, a couple of representatives from the most multinational crew I've ever seen on a boat before in my life. Uh, Pedro and Tom, good day. How are you? <laughs> I agree. Uh, good morning, Ada. How are you? Good morning, Don. Very happy to finally meet this guy because I have him in the picture in Facebook every day doing winches, doing winches. Yeah. And I want to know who he is and what his job on board is just doing winches. So my first question will be for you, uh, uh, Tom. What's your position on board? Uh, on board, I'm the youth of the team and I'm managing all the media parts. Ah, okay. That's the main job that I have. Mm. And winches, of course. Mm. You are with us, Pedro. Uh, also, you are a safety officer. You are a rounder. Both of you are rounder. Yeah, we are both. Uh, because your super is super super busy today, he couldn't come. Um, will you try to speak English? Uh, I will try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can speak uh, a bit of Spanish. Also, I'm part of the Spanish uh, group of, of the team, and um, I can speak English. I apologize for my English for the audience. <laughs> you are. Uh, you will sail as 157, and it is, I think, your crew, you are 24 on board, uh, uh, not at the time, 12, but the time, which is a big number also. Yeah. Uh, but 24, I think, is the biggest crew in the race. Uh, I think the so. It's the nationalities. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. And the lot, how, many, how many nationalities you have on board? We have seven nationalities on board. We seven? Have, yeah. yeah. Uh, Italian. Uh, Belgium, uh, Germany, Turkey, Argentina, France, and Spanish. <laughs> We're a Spanish boat with a uh, French flag with uh, people around the world. <laughs> Actually, I think if we cannot pronounce White Shadow, we can call your boat the Arch of Noé, L'Arche de Noé. <laughs> we, also, we have some animals also. Yes. Yeah. What, what, what means uh, White Shadow? Is that you who choose the name or you chose no, the name before? No, we didn't choose the name. We bought the boat uh, in Italy uh, three years ago almost, and there is the name comes with, and we love it and we keep How How did you join this project? Well, from the beginning, I start. I'm a coastal uh, sailor. I have no experience related with the uh, oceans and this kind of uh, big stuff. Um, I sail in in my line in Murcia and the south of Spain, uh, coastal regattas, and I want to do something bigger. I look for the mini transat or another thing, and I find the. The, I was following the Instagram account of uh, Guillermo, who is uh, one of the founders of the project also, our doctor. And he said, we are looking for crew for this project. And he said, hello, can I come in? I go to the pontoon in Barcelona. I start with one leg and, and, now, and now I'm a rounder. <laughs> so, so you originally applied for one leg? Yeah, and then like uh, on the beginning. Saw, Tom is a rounder from the beginning, and I I am the project uh, from two years ago, and I start when, with one leg after two legs this year, three legs, and a month and a half uh, I'm rounder. Yeah. So your your entry is quite a commune. It's, it's it's actually been interesting watching the progression how it started with John Christoph and and uh, oh jeepers I've forgotten the uh, Mark the, Miro. Yeah, yeah, Mark Miro. Mark Miro was one of the first entrants. Yeah. in the actual OGR. In fact, it was when we were at the Yacht Racing Forum. You may remember, we, anyway, yeah. we had a meeting with him. He was very passionate, didn't have a boat and so on. He, he had an idea for a boat, lost that. It was yeah. an existing sail training boat. Um, and it evolved with Jean Christophe coming in, who's a French guy that was exactly. still in, in Spain. Um, and he put put it together. So it's, he's a contributing crew. I think you you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think most of you are paying about three thousand euro or something per leg exactly. to help for some of the costs, right? Yeah. Um, and I just was watching the makeup of the crew as they're starting to line up. You've got a huge mix. You got some really hot sailors, some pure adventurers, and and so on. So it's quite a story uh, in its own right. Um, so what was your story, Pedro? First, and I'll come back to Tom in a minute. You know, what do you do in your other life, and and why did you jump in from one, then all of a sudden all the way around? I'm a graphic designer, I'm director in freelance. I'm it, it, which stuff, sorry. graphic designer. Oh, graphic designer. Um, I make the logo for the, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> for the project. <laughs> yeah. And 
And a photographer also, I freelance in, in Barcelona. And I, I as a side of like amateur, I didn't make a, most of the people come from the mini transat. We have a main few, they, they have already done the, the transat one or twice. Even now we have a, a colleague, she's, he make, she's making the transat in, now it's go, going out from, from France and come for the third legs. Um, my history is uh, I'm interested in this kind of strange things, and this is the strangest thing I can do for this year, for the next eight months. I just have to say, we, we're going to be, we're back at the Mini Transat starting this up, like we lived there, and Ada's obviously from there. Uh, so we'll see him. So he's going to, he or she? She. She. Jamila. Okay, Israel. So she's going to do the Mini Transat, yeah. and when that's done, she'll hop off and join join the crew. Yeah, oh, we'll have to make sure we, we find her and say good day. Yeah, yeah that'll be cool. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there. So anyway, and Tom, what's what what's your other life all about, and uh, how did you stumble over this bunch? <laughs> well, um, I'm. Does it work? Can you hear me? Not now. <laughs> no, turn it on again. Try again. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm a student. I'm an architecture and engineering student in Paris, uh, in fifth year now. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much my, that's my that's uh, <laughs> taking my I forgot. Yeah, all my time. <laughs> Besides the boat, so yeah. yeah. And how did I end up in the project? Uh, I heard uh, about this project three years ago by my uncle, who is uh, the captain of the boat, Jason. So that's how I ended up in the sailing uh, circle. Yeah, yeah, the sailing circle. Because I am a newbie in terms of uh, sailing. Two years ago, I didn't know how to sail. <laughs> so okay. yeah, it happened. We discussed about it, and she told me, you know, we have. We need someone less than 24, uh, 23 years, years old uh, uh, the, on the starting line. So, yeah, I was like, that, that's the opportunity for lifetime. So, yes, I took it. And, so, how much, how, how much sailing have you done on the boat now? Uh, I've, done, I've done, I think, four or five thousand miles. Yeah. yeah. Okay, on so how's life on board with 12? Because we, we, you know, we've got a, this 157 as well, and the guys are complaining when we went from 10 to 11, <laughs> and you've got 12. So uh, and how's, how's life on board? Well, I, when, when I heard that we would be 12 on board, I was kind of worried when I saw the boat, I have to say. But uh, sailing, I was kind of surprised by how it's easy in the way it is. Because basically we have two watches and half of the boat is sleeping when half is up. Uh, wake up, so it kind, kind of solved the problem, I would say. So you have two watches, so two watches, that means you're yeah. doing six hours on, six hours off during yeah. the day. Exactly. And three fours at night. Exactly. Yeah. And it works pretty well, so I'm quite. I'm not really worried about it. Yeah. We spend a lot of time sailing, uh, twelve on board, and it went quite fine. So yeah. yeah. So when you did your qualifier, I was talking to John Christoph. We talk a lot. You know, he's the you know the, the coordinated campaign, owner campaign. Uh, you you hung out at one stage. You were looking for for heavy weather. Uh, you did it. Well, it wasn't quite winter. I forget exactly what it was, but it was kind of neat because you waited for the heavy weather and then you went out. So, how were you on board for that one? Yeah, I was. Yeah. It was in January, yeah. and yeah, I was on board. Uh, we had to stop the boat for uh, at some point in the creek, you know, yeah, because the weather was just crazy. Yeah, I've never crazy. seen anything like that, <laughs> and we almost like the encore of the boat uh, uh, broke during the night, so we had to. It's crazy. <laughs> we had to fight <laughs> against the, the 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 wind to end up on the on the island. And yeah. It was quite yeah, intense. But, uh, okay. So Pedro, the, your safety officer, uh, give us a rundown of what that means and how do you feel? Is everyone safe, or you still like you must be ready to go? What's your? That means I was scary for three weeks until last Thursday I passed the <laughs> <laughs> the check. That about well, the um, that's what very interesting. They become from Mark. Uh, I want to say uh, uh, send a hello to Mark, our former uh, captain. Um, and he proposed to me after this uh, crazy uh, qualification to be the safety officer. I take that in January, and I take that very seriously. I and we try to do all. As uh, you say in the in the list and you propose in the north, uh, but because we, we think uh, we are the first interested in all safety equipment, it's okay. Yeah, you yeah. And I 
some stressful, uh, some stressful uh, moments, but uh, uh, I really learn a lot. I can say. What do you like the most in the boat? In the sailing. In in our boat, I didn't. I say I sailed before in smaller boat uh, in coastal uh, regattas, and I, I think I the word in English and in Spanish is noble. It's noble. like uh, it's a señor. It's like ah, a, it's, a, it's a master. It's a master. It's a master. Of, uh, maybe yours. I I thought yours is is uh, well the catch. I, I don't know the the difference uh, sailing uh, exactly, but I I feel very. Safe in this boat, I feel it's a, a track in, in the middle of the sea, and, <laughs> and he, 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 he takes care of, of us. It was, you say a truck, yeah, it? yeah, and he takes care of us, okay. yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. There's always a definition <laughs> when the boat is powerful, it's hard to call her a sheep. No. Not that women aren't powerful, but you know, yeah. why? No. <laughs> why do why? Why? Well, the tradition of the sea is that every every vessel is a sheep, you know, yeah. there's a, some really okay. interesting explanations of that as well. But I've uh, you know, we, I had a big powerful steel motorcycle once and I couldn't call it a she. I no. hadn't called it a he. And Marie Tavoli, as you know, you know, she refers to Penduic as a he because it's just you know? and so yeah. This he the white side is also a he for me. Uh, it's <laughs> like a master. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so how come so many mini sailors? How many like th that's pretty hot, you know? Mini sailors are pretty into technical sailing, you know, sail trim and, and racing and light and, and so on. And yet, yet, how many class mini sailors have you got on board? Mini sailors, yes. Uh, Three or something. Mm. Four. Four. Is the Brahman. Greg, Guillermo, Jamila. Three at least. Three, yeah, okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, no? Yeah. Three or four, yeah. Yeah. So do you see. I'm not mine, from. Yeah. Okay, I can, I can say this is. We're we are the bottom of the fleet in the uh, Sayula class, you know, fifty seven yeah. feet. You're up against the uh, uh you know, Swan sixty five, six five yeah. one, all that sort of stuff. Are you in it to win it? What's the caper there? Or is it all about the adventure or you know, how do you how's everyone feel on board? For me, but I talk to the skipper. <laughs> <laughs> ask to ask to the skipper. <laughs> yeah, you say we for that for uh you already say uh, for me, it's not uh, in a uh, level of competition. Personally, I, I'm not. Uh, for me, arrive to Southampton is a trophy for us. For me, it's a big trophy to arrive to Southampton. For the whole crew, I think it's also to be in the star line is a, a, a real thing. Yeah. And personally, for me, it's not important to be in the first, second, or third class. We can be the fourth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's easy to arrive to the third flat. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, for me, the, the, the whole experience is the most important. And I arrive to, to come back here next uh, spring and be here happy to, to do this amazing thing. Yeah. This is one of the beauty of this race, too. When I, I'm listening to you both, you have professional skippers on board. And when well, I listen to, <laughs> and not professional in a very professional yeah. way, but when you speak about experience. the mini, yeah. it's more experience. The ocean sailing, I mean. And when I'm listening to you, I, I, I see one of the things which is a, one of the beauty of this. When you say, "Oh, for me, it was an adventure to arrive to Southampton." Yeah. This is because that race uh, you know, allow ordinary people yeah. to yeah. do extraordinary things and when you see my adventure so far is to go to Southampton yeah. <laughs> and you will go Check. around the world so, <laughs> so next, next one is just a, a leg you, you take it step by step exactly the, uh, this is uh, a thing we, we take with, because we, call, we work a lot on in the, in the boat it's uh, crew uh, have the obligation because we don't have uh, money for making it in other way to the refit and we take a, a, we spend a lot of time working in the in the boat in Barcelona, and we have many problems in through the the refit. And we 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 when we before come before I start the uh, take the go out from Barcelona, we say first step go out from Barcelona. Next step, I arrive to Vigo. Next step, I arrive to Southampton. <laughs> now, next step is I arrive now to Sunday, yeah. <laughs> we are close. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and then Cape Town. And, and Cape Town. Yeah. Um, you know, this, a, this is the philosophy <laughs> in this moment. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really interesting because eh? tonight, you know, here, we're going to have uh, over a hundred 
Whitbread veterans come here for a big reunion. And then we'll have all of the crews here as well from the AGA. It's going to be a very interesting interaction because it was exactly the same in 1973. You know, they did, no one had ever done it before, you know, a race around the world and so on. So, and now it's been 30 years since ordinary sailors can have a crack and that's what you're yeah. doing. And you're going through exactly the same emotions. So it's going to be quite a fun yeah. night tonight. <laughs> anyway, so, um, okay, tell us a bit about the food on board, you know, like we know your watch system, but what sort of food has that managed? Well, we take the food very seriously because we know that it's like, uh, like the, we, we say in French, le nerf de la guerre. Uh, the nerve yeah. of the war. Yeah, the nerve yeah. of the war, <laughs> which is, it's very important to have like a proper meal, a good meal, to have like, yeah, a good spirit on, on board. And yeah. and even if, if the conditions are rough, uh, the meal is very important. So yeah. we try to cook as much as we can and have the fresh, uh, the most fresh food that we, we can. So yeah, that's, I think that's pretty much the philosophy that we have. Uh, and managing and trying to do it in the best condition. So, so how do you implement that? You have like you know twelve dozen eggs and you know steaks in the freezer, or you know, you know what's happening? Uh, well, we have a bit of uh, dry food, of course, but uh, as... all the um... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are not in the food uh, thing. <laughs> we are we, for cook. We have uh, each day a person uh, who manages the the cook, and you cook uh, again. We have a menu is uh, nine days, and you okay. um, we rotate the menu for nine days for the whole uh, leg, and we have uh, all all the fresh we can transport until it's uh, rotten or eaten, not rotten, <laughs> preferably, yeah. and and we have uh, dry food, tomatoes and this kind of thing to make the the dishes. Uh, we have half. Uh, uh, in canes, half in dry food, and some leofilis uh, ready to go for bad weather things. Um, we have uh, the idea is to be eating, um, feeding well, and um, less well as well as well as well, <laughs> until emergency food. <laughs> no, we don't have the, not in the grab but we have some fast uh, make uh, food uh, very not nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Store, where, do you, yeah. where do you store your fruit and vegetables? Where do you store them? We store uh, in nets. Yeah. Um, we have some boxes, plastic boxes, uh, very hard. Uh, they are um, attached. Yeah. Uh, um, and we store in because they, they have uh, some air, big throw, and not the sun. But the uh, industry manages uh, the, the thing. Uh, now he's also organized by Amancio, a former crew who uh, he also already made the, the clipper and he has some experience in that and he uh, gives to us all his uh, knowledge yeah. about yeah, yeah, yeah. we are very happy in the system for yeah. the food. Yeah. How do you feel about all your safety training? You know, like that you had to go through like survival training and then on board man overboard drills and everything. Do you think you everyone's happy with that? We have uh, the war sailing training, the safety official one in well, front of ones making friends and others in Barcelona on um, um, different places. The official one, and we, we in the we have uh, we um, from the beginning, um, Mark, uh, well, our former captain, make a program with three levels of training, and the first and second one is uh, they, they are very focused in how they were all the stuff in the boat works and also in uh, safety procedures, yeah. procedures and we make uh, all these kind of drills and, and yeah procedures. okay all very good i think we're okay. um, i have two questions oh, yeah. well one for you a quick one and another one for you just quickly since you are here did you have time to interact with the other crew did you have time to meet the other Competitors in the race. I've been in in the medical training, so I mean, I, I interact with Captain Coconut. I put my <laughs> my arm. Oh, he's you. You are the yeah, one I, um... who destroyed Coconut. No, <laughs> uh, I saw him in the evening when he arrived after the thing. No, <laughs> we are friends now. <laughs> <laughs> They all have, I don't know if we're explaining yeah, the, quickly, they have to work 
with a doctor on each other exactly. to train how to put a cannula inside. So it's not the doctor who's doing that. It's this guy who never touched a thing to destroy exactly. absolutely the arm of coconut. No, and no, also no. he did that on purpose because he's the, the other swan 57 and he wants to be in front. Yeah. Our doctor said very good job. <laughs> Me, I was scary when I we changed the place. <laughs> I was really scary. <laughs> anyway, yeah. we'll let you both and quickly before we finish the, the the other question for, for you, um, uh, Tom, uh, you are the youngest crew on board and you are so young, you are an architect, you are 23 years old, 22, 23 years old. Your generation grew up with technology, with uh, computers, with an iPhone in the hands every day. How, how do you apprehend these eight months without Instagram and your friends and the WhatsApp groups and all that? Actually, one of the main reasons why I joined the project, um, it's kind of hard to find a way to disconnect nowadays. Like you have internet like everywhere. Even I went to the jungle in Amazonia, I had internet. I was quite shocked about that. So uh, I feel like there is not that much opportunity today to be really disconnect, and I was really looking for that. So we'll see how hard it is. Actually, I don't know because I never I grew up with internet. I when I was born. Internet was already there, so. so <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Than I was born with the phone in my hand, almost, you know. So um, yeah, I think it's gonna be interesting, but maybe hard because you know, if you pick up your phone, you don't even you do it without even thinking. So yeah, that's gonna be a big thematic. But I'm, I'm here to for I'm seeking this. So yeah, that's it. yeah, cool. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll uh, look forward to. We'll actually go live tonight on the Whitbread reunion. Uh, a lot of, quite a few will be talking and everything. So if you're watching this, be ready for the reunion tonight. It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, then we're back again tomorrow. And so uh, lots of little things happening. Um, this is uh, Citroen Bear. You know, all the interns going to get that. We keep forgetting. Now they've got their new uniform. This one's yeah. the last guy to be done. They're getting OGR uniforms, but that's another story. Um, so, okay, that's it. We'll uh, see you again and uh, count down to the start. What's and, today? Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, Wednesday. so only Tuesday. Tuesday, four days. Four <laughs> days before, oops, four oh. days before, uh, okay. before they go, we'll be here again tomorrow yep. morning at half past ten. Thank you very much to both yeah, of you. you. And yep. bon appétit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for that.